One of the biggest challenges for us is to help people realize that our merger is not about the institutions, but it's about the issues that we're working on. And so how are we going to use this as an opportunity, as a platform to raise awareness of the things that matter both to us, and that is sustainable uh, environments, uh, preventing deforestation, linking marginalized communities together, and getting much more out of our food system and agricultural and rural enterprises. Well, that's that's all the thing that we want to do. Was that we we have in our mandate is as a, to center. But what the problem we have now with this is that within the CGIAR we are not perceived as the people that can deliver this uh, because there are other actors that are supposedly more powerful or more efficient in delivering that. And for the outside world, uh, we are seen as C4 is looking at forest, is not looking at food and nutrition. Uh, ICRAF is looking at agroforestry, is not necessarily looking at the overall landscape. And by getting together, we can have a more complete uh, answer and a stronger voice uh, in terms of setting the agenda and in terms of raising the awareness and showing that forest, trees, agroforestry matter beyond what is commonly perceived as uh, their main interest of making timber or producing fruit or things like that. It's the whole, covering the whole issue of and, and the whole benefits, the whole contribution of forestry and agroforestry uh, in terms of sustainable development. So one of the things that um, helped bring us together was our shared I suppose bewilderment of why the world pays so little attention to forestry and agroforestry and sustainable landscapes. And when we think about the proportion of GDP in the world to agriculture and forestry, combined they're only 6%, but yet they're so fundamental to life and our hydrological cycles and, and the natural capital in which we all prosper. And I think this, uh, this merger gives us that great chance to to raise that profile, to raise awareness, to raise appreciation, and then hopefully investment in what is our agenda. Because you're right, Robert, that the marginalization of the mandates, the, the diminution of the importance of it, means that, that we can't be as effective uh, with our partners, with our networks, um, and with the research agendas that we've been held responsible for. Size matters because also if, if, if we limit ourselves to our classic world, uh, the national agricultural research system or the national forestry system or the public aid to deliver public good, uh, we are missing a large part of the people that can change the agenda, which are the, the big corporates, the big uh, players like uh, the Danone, the Nestle or the, the Cargill of the world, I mean, a sort of... And, I think that that was really pushed um, probably more by, by ECRAF than it has been by C4, but it's something that we, we both recognize. We, we need to involve these this players that are outside of the sector of the finance, and how do you see that? With uh, the, um, I suppose it's, uh, it's taking conservation and wise stewardship and all of the things that, that C4 and ECRAF, as well as you know, the wonderful initiatives like the Global Landscape Forum. I mean, it is the world's premier platform for advocating for these issues. And that gives us the exposure and the reach and, and, and the machine to create that awareness. And what we hope from that will come that, that appreciation, that recognition. Because, you know, I think we have to be starkly aware that agriculture and our food system at the moment is both bankrupt and broken. And uh, how can we make in a, uh, how can we make this merging and going together initiative both a success for the outside world? So we are delivering on our mandate and we raise the awareness. At the same time, it's a it's a success internally for our staff and and our stakeholders. So I think it's about connecting those opportunities and the demand and the supply of what we have. So we have together an amazing $1.8 billion legacy of past investment. 
C4 has been in existence for a very dynamic period of 25 years and what you've created in terms of this international network, this platform, this policy, uh, the learning, the connecting, the you know changing the way the world thinks about things like like Red Plus, like like f like landscapes, how we how we connect the various elements in them. So how we take that forward to make sure that that um, there is you know committed investment and who's going to invest? First of all, it's going to be the smallholder farmers. It's got to work for them. So we have to have the evidence, the opportunities, the the solutions that make a viable and prosperous livelihood for them. And when we can connect that through the value chain with, um, with aggregators, with uh, processors, with traders, with, and eventually consumers, that will be success. And so essentially there is a business case for all of this. And part of our problem is we've been grounded in, in almost shackled, if you like, by, by the public goods paradigm. We want to stay in business for a long period of time, not because our mandate is to stay in business, because our, we think our mandate is still very much relevant and overlooked by the other people. So, uh, and we are saying, okay, by going into this joint exercise, we are going to, uh, in fact, uh, we are not looking at saving costs, we are looking at increasing our reach, and we are looking at reaching people that are not now in part of our customer or people interested, that means that we will need to recruit staff. So for me, the merger is, in fact, we are going to create additional job in the organization. They may be different to some of the job that we have already, but it's really about expansion. It's not about trying to go together uh, to survive, survive a little bit longer and, and reduce our cost of back office by 20%. I like I like that framing that you know that it's not about us as institutions but about what we do but what we do needs a strong institution so how are we revitalizing our institutions and so given that we're 25 and 40 years old we've been through that institutional life cycle we've had the um, creation and evolution phase the growth phase expansion and now we're into a maturity and and we face the choice of either stagnation or decline or revitalization and growth. And we felt coming together, we would be stronger. We would have a, a stronger materials, bigger networks, bigger geography, better partnerships to be able to deliver that. But that, that paradigm shift, you know, from just being, you know, a public goods provider funded by uh, public money is, is the exciting thing because we've seen the disruption in our world. And when you're living in a disrupted world, either you can you can absorb it and be the one who's disrupted or you can also disrupt uh, the paradigms and the thinking and the investments and opportunities by being very clear with our logic and our planning and and what the merger has done i think for both institutions well is to get us back to that strong planning phase what does the world need what is the demand that we're expressing and what value propositions that c4 and aircraft have and what they have together and how we're stronger together than uh, separately. Well, I think that there is a risk also that uh, we, we, are, we are going for a new, uh, a new paradigm or we are going for a new uh, high-tech tool uh, so that in a sense that we all move into having a, a smartphone and we leave the, 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 the fax machine dying, uh, rusting in the corner. And for me, sort of the fax machine is all the things that we have done so far in terms of our classic work of research in agroforestry, in terms of forestry research, in terms of the, the, the wheels that are keeping our bus rolling, I mean, it's sort of, and then we, we suddenly move uh, towards everything we forget we do. So I think that's something that also our staff and our stakeholders should understand. I mean, it's sort of, we don't want to forget or abandon what we have been doing for the last 25 or 40 years, we want to use that as the basis to expand in another arena, but still continue doing what we have been doing as long as it is relevant and give the result we want. So the, the problems, the big problems that the world is facing, climate change, habitat destruction, land degradation, water shortages, huge social inequalities and, and uh, disconnects, all of those problems are, are not 
short problems and they're not going to be fixed overnight. And those perennial problems need perennial solutions. And I think that's where C4 and aircraft, we can really leap in and profile that, that opportunity, fill that demand by the tremendous knowledge products that we have, the, the, the data, the analyses, the evidence, as well as the technical, social and policy solutions. And, and so the demand that we're getting now from uh, the, the non-traditional um, kind of partners, the, the private sector, the private investors for, for more um, uh, project design, for greater decision support, for delivery options, for capacity development, for, for playing that interfacing role. And, and I think because of our identities as two international organizations, that playing that role as independents. We're, we're kind of asking the tough questions, but in a friendly way. So the adversarial type of actors that are out there that challenge corporations, we're asking exactly the same questions, but in a way that's going to lead to change and progression. And, and also our ability to understand and articulate some of those problems that, that, that supply chains are facing. And particularly, I think the, the climate related um, uh, risks that, that businesses uh, and corporations are facing because they now have to disclose those. And their, their stakeholders and the regulatory authorities are going to ask them to identify and mitigate those risks. And that's much of the landscape work uh, that C4 and ICRAF and, 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 our, and our related groups, the um, Global Landscape Forum, the Tropical Landscape Finance Facility, um, the Zero Based Natural Farming work in India, the African Orphan Crops Consortium, these type of weaving together these initiatives to, to help provide that knowledge, those, some of those solutions, and, and demonstrating that can actually work is the exciting part. Yeah, I mean, Robert, how are we going to together go about convincing the world that our $1.8 billion of, of legacy investment over the past combined 65 years that that's of relevance to today and, and, and how do we take those knowledge products into knowledge services that people demand? Well, that, that's, we think that we can do that via this new, uh, uh, new approach to uh, natural based solution to uh, uh, showing the people that restoration is not simply something that is paid by public money to produce ecosystem services but can be paid by private funding to produce goods that benefit people and create jobs and at the same time provide the ecosystem services that the world needs. And that, that, that's where I, I see the, the, the big elements for, for expansion and that, that, that's where, I, that's where I, I see the new part of the, the new orientation or the additional orientation that we want to give our common uh, business. Uh, besides the, the classical one that we want to continue because it feeds into the new one. Okay, that's great. I think so if we can articulate that issue around changing the paradigm from public goods to say that, you know, it is about connecting public goods with private interests. It's about using private interests as well to generate public goods and, and not just thinking of those public goods as the, as the output, the knowledge, the, the germplasm, the material, the method but translating that into to, to a, to a, a public good outcome and a public good impact is really going to be exciting because, you know, $1.8 billion is not a trivial legacy investment. And, and taking that Amazon warehouse of all of this treasure, some of it may be hard to decipher, but that's where, where you know, the, the tremendous staff, the 700 great people that work for aircraft and C4 around the world, and how we can mobilize them to be the champions of this merger, the champions of that combined approach, is, is, is to our favor. Well, that, that means also that for a foreseeable future, I mean, we still need to have a very strong C4 and a very strong e-craft, mm. together with a very strong yes. merge entity or new entity, and, and that the importance of, of the brand should not be uh, underestimated, uh, because in fact, uh, people are willing to buy uh, our product or, or e-craft product or, because they will rely on a brand. So uh, we need to maintain our current brands and institutions uh, because they offer us the capacity to work in many countries through our country agreement and 
because we have also commitment existing with our host countries, with, with our partners, and we need to create a, a, a new brand that is building on the two existing ones, and ultimately, in, in, a, in a long distant or not so long distant future, we have to bring all that together, but by keeping the brands, it's a bit like uh, when you buy uh, Orangina, you are buying the Orangina brand, but behind there is another company. Yeah, so that's a powerful point in terms of it is keeping and renewing our value proposition and using the brand as a delivery mechanism. So our brands deliver those new value propositions and how they're evolving and connecting with the past 65 years of, of work and, and the new challenges that the world is facing with, with increased population, you know, climate change, uh, social disruption, conflict, habitat destruction. How we, how we link that to our delivery and, and it comes back, I suppose, to, to the staff and how whilst the, the board have taken very bold and very ambitious uh, and very courageous decision to, uh, for two institutions to merge and our, our merge is underway since the 1st of January 2019, the important thing is, is bringing staff along with that so that the staff are champions and our partners, our investors and our, and our beneficiaries ultimately you know, are, are champions of that merger because they see that coming together, they see that combination of those different competencies, of those uh, complementary orientations around sustainable land use, landscapes together, is the, is the, is the win-win-win for everybody. So I guess, Robert, one of the fundamental things that uh, you know, we have to be, continue to be front of our, our minds as we deliver this merger uh, between C4 and ICRAP is, is the role of staff. Institutions are not just the bricks and the mortar and the name and the bank accounts and the host country agreements. They're the staff. Uh, and they're the ones who are uh, the biggest champions, the greatest drivers, the ones who, who do the work. Well, they are our biggest donor, de facto in terms of the time they give to us, the working on Saturday or Sunday or public holiday or at odd hours. So um, I, I think if we want to, to put in the list of the donor that, that gives to the institution and if we really uh, make a, a calculation on how much the staff gives on top of their normal eight hours of work, uh, five days a week, I, I think that they, they are our biggest stakeholder. And, for organizations like uh, C4 and ICRAF, I mean, it's sort of, they are definitely our, we don't say not our only asset, but by far the, the biggest, biggest, biggest asset. If you have to choose between the bricks and mortar and the staff, you will choose the staff rather than the brick and mortar. So one of the things that is common between C4 and ICRAF throughout our histories has been that, that sense of purpose, that, that mandate, that very worthy enterprise. and. You know, when you are changing the lives of poor people, when you're helping make sus landscapes more sustainable, when we're driving food security and nutritional security, and, and I suppose wise stewardship of those natural resources, it's easier for staff to connect to it because there's a sense of, of purpose it, throughout the organization, from the scientists, the technicians, the enablers, the, the accountants, the administrators, everyone together working towards that. And that's incredibly motivational we both organizations had come to a stage of maturity where we were we were stagnating institutionally and i think the the excitement for staff in this phase and the great opportunity is now we're we're like a startup we're starting again we're in the creation evolution growth phase uh, into maturity for another cycle and and that's a real great opportunity that the there we can reinvent our futures, there we can break out of that stagnation and, and poor recognition, appreciation and investment and bring stuff along with that. I mean, th there's just such amazing opportunities for, for, for jobs here, for, for careers, for connecting people's own personal lives and motivation to the, this new combined institutional agenda. It doesn't just happen, it's a process. And as we go through that process, what does success look like at the end of it? And, and I think that this having an accelerated impact, having you know, more effect, making more of a difference in the world is obviously the ultimate indicator for us. And we're tracking that uh, with our boards. 
um, but also you know the institutional viability dimension the um, connecting to new stakeholders uh, aspects of it to bringing that 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 greater um, profile to the work of sustainable landscapes and and uh, the partners with which we work with well that's accelerated impact and uh, the changing the world for a better place it's the ultimate goal but it was sort of I think more maybe a, a, a bit selfishly I mean it's not for us it's also uh, uh, and I us and I say us is the merging entity is not you and I it's to uh, ultimately have uh, more flexible funding to do what we think is important and not simply to implement projects that are the idea of someone else. It's uh, to get ultimately a, a better work-life balance uh, for the staff, uh, to provide some certainties in terms of future, in terms of career, in terms of prospect, knowing that people will have to go out of their comfort zone uh, they, uh, in terms of thinking, in terms of reimagining themselves. But that, that's really uh, at the same time that we try to offer something to the rest of the world that we should not neglect uh, our own institution because ultimately uh, the two are interlinked. I mean, it's not a, and, and maybe in, in 20 years after the success of this current, we will have to change again. But in the meantime, achieving success uh, will depend very much on the way how we treat ourselves. So uh, those are the two fundamentals of, of, of the objectives, the goals of the merger, to, to have that accelerated impact and combine that with greater institutional viability and making sure that we are uh, getting sufficient resources, delivering value for money, connecting with our stakeholders better and expanding the vision and paradigms of others. I mean, both institutions sit within the, the CGIR system and here we are the slightly unusual, slightly idiosyncratic cousins who still get invited to the party and we're within the system, fully uh, um, signed up members. However, some of the, the paradigms around increasing food production solely or connecting it without thinking about the environmental footprint is, uh, needs to be changed, needs to be reinforced. And I think that by coming together through this merger, we can, we can help change that paradigm, we can help enhance it. We can connect the, the, the green revolution with the green economy in much more effective and elegant ways.